This is a bigger deal to me. This. Now, again, is a close below significant? Yes. Is it the end all? Hello everyone, Gareth Soloway back again with an explosive show as the Bitcoin is tanking and the Ancro data is quickly shifting sides. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. We've got big things going on here. First and foremost, we're going to just quickly look at what's driving this market today. And I'm going to get, by the way, into the market blast. I want to go over that. But I wanted to show you this because this is a big deal. The yields, this is the 10-year yield, and it's breaking out above this level. Now, has it confirmed? No. But ultimately, look at this area here, here, and here, and look at where the 10-year yield is trading right now at 4.389%. That is a big deal, all right, guys? Again, what does that imply? It implies the Federal Reserve is likely, or at least markets are starting to anticipate, less cuts. Now, I have a, I have a hypothesis on this. I think the fact that we're seeing oil up again today, we're seeing gold up, commodities are moving up, gasoline, the chart of gasoline is breaking out of a bull pattern here. If we see uh, commodities continue to go up, it's basically going to raise inflation. It just is. I mean, if you see oil, gasoline, all these things start to go higher, guess what? Inflation's going up. That's going to handcuff the Fed. I've said that for the longest time. All right, what we're going to do now, guys, is we're going to get into the market blast. Let's get right into it here. So we have our morning market blast on verifiedinvesting.com. We're going to scroll down to the keys of the day. Notice I zoomed in today, so I think you guys can probably read this a little bit clearer. Yields, again, are potentially breaking out above the 4.34% resistance level, currently trading at 4.377. That was when I wrote this, but it obviously is a little bit higher even now. We actually touched 4.4%. Next up, what does this imply? It implies the Fed can cut or will be able to cut less if if inflation continues up and the yields are telling us that that might be the case. Futures are selling sharply this morning on the NASDAQ and the S&P. We're going to look at those charts in a minute. But again, this is continuing to be an inverse reaction to the 10-year yield. 10-year yield going up. We even saw the dollar screaming and breaking and confirming yesterday. These are all negatives for the stock market and for crypto. And by the way, we'll talk about Bitcoin dropping tremendously today. Okay, next up, oil higher again today and gasoline attempting to break out from that bull flag. The higher the commodity goes, the higher inflation goes. That's just the way it works, right? So this may explain why rates are being pushed up. Think about that logically. This is my key thesis of the day, that as long as you see commodities going up, it's going to mean yields are going to have to go up to counteract the inflation pressure that that rising commodity basket has on inflation, right? All right, so again, now having said that, there's a caveat. But wait, there's more. What we have to look here, guys, is to take a look at what's coming out today. So the jolts data. The JOLTS data being released at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And again, the expectations are 8.76 million job openings. Again, JOLTS stands for job openings, all right? So it's how many openings are there. As of last month, we had 8.86 million. That's about 1.3 jobs for every single person. Now, that doesn't tell us if it's part-time or full-time, keep in mind. So just be aware of that as well. But either way, markets are expecting 8.76 any number that comes in, let's say, below 8.5 or sp especially towards 8 million, the markets will likely see a rally because yields will pull back. So as much as yields are up today, and we talked about that chart just a minute ago when we started, we have to remember that if the job openings show weakness, meaning a lot less job openings, that jump in the yields, which is unconfirmed as a breakout right now, we might see it reverse. Now, if it comes in stronger, let's say we come in at 9 million job openings, Ho, ho, ho. Watch out because markets will get crushed on that and yields will probably go well beyond 4.4% on the 10-year. 
All right, couple stocks in motion today. PVH is down 22% today, guys. 22% as the market. Again, this is the fashion retailer that owns Tommy Hilfiger, Calvin Klein. They gave poor guidance. They cited a tough macro environment. Again, this is something that I've kind of been keying in on this, guys, and I'm going to talk about some charts in a minute. But we're seeing more and more companies missing or lowering guidance because they're saying that the macro picture is not good. Now, that doesn't just include outside the U.S. These are a lot of these brands are internal in the U.S. as well, and it does appear consumers are starting to reach their limit. There's only so much money you can put on credit cards before the credit card company says, whoa, you can't put any more on these credit cards. EV company, Canoe, Go EV is the symbol, dropping 27% on disappointing guidance. This has just been a tough environment for EV companies. There's no doubt about it. Let's check in on the S&P 500, which just continues. Look at this, guys. This is pre-market right now. Look at this rollover in the S&P 500. We closed right here yesterday. So again, this is a big move, and this is all because of fear leading into these job reports later this week. Again, jolts today, ADP private sector data tomorrow, Friday, the non-farm payrolls and unemployment. And again, all of this is going to be a determining factor. If it's strong, if it's solid numbers, I don't see how the Fed cuts three times this year, even though that's what uh, Jerome Powell said a week, two weeks ago, right? It just doesn't make sense. Why would you cut when the economy is so strong and inflation is upticking? It would just be a negative and probably cause inflation to go even higher. All right, so that's what we have there. Remember, guys, I've been giving you literally the game plan on this every single day. What do we know about the S&P 500, the wedge pattern? Did it confirm? What does it mean if it confirms? Did it break and confirm? The answer is yes. We had confirmation here, couple sideways days around the holiday, and you know what's starting to happen? Exactly what the probabilities were telling us. We're starting to turn down. NASDAQ 100, holy cow, look at this drop on the NASDAQ 100, guys. And remember, the NASDAQ 100, the QQQ, already confirmed like weeks ago. So we knew it was coming. We just had to wait, wait, get past the Easter holiday, get past all this hype and all this money flow that was coming in. And one of the things yesterday, right? So yesterday, remember, the markets were opening sharply higher, and we actually had a pop initially. You know what that was? That was retail money going into 401ks, IRAs going into the market, first of the quarter, first of the month. You know what? Markets sold off from there. That's institutional exiting. It's basically, basically the institutions... We're using that initial month and quarter money as exit liquidity. Like, that's what was happening. And look at what the markets are doing now. I mean, it's all starting to play out per what the charts were alerting us. This is an amazing chart. Now, when, when, um, when we saw, when we talked about Google just a few weeks ago, I said, guys, and this was in this very game plan, I said, listen, this is a buying opportunity. There's a channel here, a parallel channel that goes back a long, long way. Look at how you close below it, but ask yourself, did you confirm? The answer is no. And look at what price has done. Now, if you want to know something, I don't know if this will happen, but if Google hits this trend line right up here, does that become a long or a short? Would you expect support or resistance? This is resistance, right? And so again, nothing's perfect, but in other words, if you hit this, you would expect a pullback because again, that's what's happened in this channel. Bitcoin, wow. So this is one of those things, and I, I kind of hypothesized this yesterday, but it still was holding its bull pattern. But I said, listen, you got the weekly, the monthly, and the quarterly close above, and, you know, we saw all this hype on social media. Oh, every time this happens, we see like an X hundred percent move to the upside. And I'm like, man, if I'm the institutions, I'm just loving that thought process because that gets the last few bulls long thinking this thing is going to rip up. Wouldn't it be something if it was a rug pull, meaning Bitcoin collapsed? And we know that the stock market is connected here because it's a risk on risk off situation. Well, sure enough, today down to 65,000. Now we have to see where today closes. And granted, it's still Still closed above on the weekly, the quarter, the monthly, and the quarterly. So we want to watch next Sunday night. But you can't deny that this is not good, at least for the bull flag, unless we come back in this range here. And you could even, to be honest, we could even lower the line just a little bit to include a little bit of those tails. But unless we somehow rally back into that range, today you could fail the bull flag. Failed bull flags are usually not good situations because, again, failed bull flags result in downside moves of significance more often than not. Now, again, the weekly, the monthly, the quarterly, we have to monitor. Those are still in play. Got to respect them, of course. But again, what a drop here. 
in terms of the chart. Now, I do want to show you something real quick, guys. Where, again, am I looking so closely at? And you guys know this, right? I mean, you guys probably know this by heart at this point. But look, this is a this is bigger deal to me. This. Now, again, is a close below significant? Yes. Is it the end-all, be-all signal of a breakdown? No, because it hasn't confirmed. You're above this line, it would have to confirm below. So even if it closes below, yes, it weakens, it opens the door for confirmation, but I would really want to see con a confirming move in the next day or so to really say, wow, we've now broken this trend line. And remember what I said to you guys. I said, listen, you have this here, right? That's your big line there. That's your double top. That's your high pivot. But then this line here is the big one. Like this, you, I said in, in pretty much every game plan, you do not want to see price start getting below this line. Now, again, I want to see confirmation so that we actually have that probability really heavily favoring. But if that happens, if we confirm, you'll have a stop here at 60 and change. But then, you know what? I've said it for the longest time. Anywhere between, basically anywhere between 50 and 52 and 49 is probably where we're headed. Remember, 52 is this sideways consolidation. That's going to be support. 49 was the high of the spot ETF. Now, we have a long day to go in Bitcoin, but certainly, does this perk my ears up? Does this potentially say, wait, there could be some volatility for some trading opportunities? It certainly does. Another chart I highlighted to you just the other day, I think we went over this yesterday, this chart of INJ, I said, guys, the more you hit on a line, remember this, right? When you hammer on a line over and over again, it's the equivalent of you ramming into a locked door. The first time, the second time, the third time, you may not bust that door down. You keep hitting that door, eventually the, the lock gets weak, the hinges get weak, and it falls over or it breaks in. That's exactly what you have here, right? Look at this. I mean, just over and over and over, eventually that door gives way. So now we're in a position where INJ likely headed down to that level there. Be aware of that, all right? So again, your target right now about 25-ish, give or take, maybe 26. If that breaks, then you're heading all the way down to 19 down here, this 19 level. But again, right now, respect the 25, 26 level. Ethereum, look at where we're heading, guys. This is going to be a big test for Ethereum. So we have a trend line here on Ethereum from this point to this point to this point, right? So right off the bat was key. Look at how price chopped there and then broke out, retraced, and then look at what we're coming down to. So big support coming up around 32.50 or so, 32.30 on Ethereum. If it closes below, same rules apply. It needs to confirm. You confirm below, you're going down here. All right, that's your next big support right there on Ethereum. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Gareth Soloway. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.